Hello, welcome to this vlog. Today I'm gonna talk about um, springtime here on the west coast of Sweden. Um, this is my permaculture homestead and um, springtime means some things have gone well during the growing season and some things didn't go as well as you wished for and that's life kind of and uh, that usually means you need to take some hard decisions uh, among your plants you need to get rid of those that didn't get so well along as you thought or had hoped for them to to be some things die and some things flourish that's life really how it is and I also had this uh, permaculture course this weekend and uh, I'll show you some of the projects that we did here um, so I sh sh first show you uh, the deaths of my plants it was really harsh this year here because we had um, a severe frost in May like uh, minus four celsius which meant that for a lot of people the tomatoes and the cucumbers died among other things and um, that means that we can um, oh, my battery uh, that means uh, we can do some sharing with each other um, some people had um, maybe a greenhouse with some um, heat installed so that their tomatoes and their plants survive and some had um, an overflow of other things that uh, you could share with your friend or neighbor or something like that. So it's also really a time for sharing things and plants among each other like um, maybe you got um, an excess of seeds or growing materials or things that you don't really need and don't be afraid of you know giving them away or passing them on and you can get something else the next season or so it can be tools and anything i'm so grateful for all the things that i have gathered and had from people around me and i know people are grateful for things that i have shared with them as well it just makes this circle of flow of energy better so and i think that's also how you should uh, do within yourself like um, to have a flow of your energy and not to get stagnant like you can get stagnant with all your stuff that you have in inside your houses and things and you can also get stagnant um, within your body if you don't uh, let things flow easily emotions should flow and you should speak and talk uh, about what you think um, most often anyway if it doesn't hurt um, i think uh, some children are really good with that like you know they have a sense of they're also often uh, humble they say things they have a way of saying things in a very loving way even if they're very straightforward they don't really hurt other people because they say it so with the intention of love so if the intention is love i think it's always a good thing to just just breathe out and uh, let it flow so let, let's flow together here i'll show you what's going on so mm, well some of those piles are getting smaller uh, not all of them uh, maybe you saw a tree down there and you plant a tree I'll show you and then uh, one of the projects was up here on the land it's a plantation of uh, uh, the second apple tree and uh, I'll later come back to what I done in the soil underneath there but let's get back to the what died <laughs> because sometimes you need to look at the, the hard things in life as well you shouldn't uh, shut your eyes and close your ears 
for what is um, bothering, bothersome. At first, because this comes first. So this is one of the projects. I put this uh, apple tree here. So it's the beginning of uh, co-planting. And um, yeah, you can see I put my vegetable rubbish there. I will put some soil on top of that. And I put some down of the, the lilies, the eastern lilies, do you say that? Onions and some garlic around the tree. Uh, fruit trees are supposed to go well with onions. And, um, and this is south, is down the hill. So in one of the corners, pretty close to the tree, we put a um a berry oh god help me what's the name Röda vinbär. what's the name of that berry a <laughs> very common bush in sweden a oh, current current a red current um towards the south and i know they can grow pretty large so i put them pretty close to the tree so that um, they will have more branches facing the south and um then i put a black current on the more of the shadow side of the tree even though it will have some morning sun uh, because um, it doesn't need as much sun as the red berry the black currant and uh, then uh, oh what's this name i'm so sorry i haven't learned all the english names Wallert in sweden swedish uh, bocking 14 is the variety that doesn't spread in vase, it doesn't become invasive. It's such a um, comfrey, I think it's comfrey in English. Uh, it gets blue flowers and it spread like a nice bush. Uh, you can use the leaf as um, toilet paper because it's kind of um, um, soft and uh, uh, the leaves, maybe the bush will be like 70 centimeters by time and all you can pick the leaves and put them as a ground cover over and over during the season mm. so um, it's a very good uh, permaculture plant to put around the trees as a ground cover and uh, it will um, uh, grow mulch uh, and grow soil by time it also has really deep roots helping to support the tree with nutrients from uh, the layers below and um, and also pea pluck another onion that you can eat a perennial onion and as I'm on a very low budget I bought the tree uh, because it would take so much time I think and also I yet don't have the skills. I think I could, you know, put a tree together with a special root system. And but it's more complicated than take a, a bush uh, branch because they usually have a different root system than uh, the above system. So when you plant the tree, you should make sure that the cutting this here is where this is the root and this is like the above variety and it should be above ground also later on when there are leaves and stuff this is so put have some few centimeters before this mark come and then instead of putting a stick um, I put a stones to hold the roots to make it stable if the wind blows like heavy and this also uh, releases uh, heat uh, for the for the tree um, and then uh, for this land i don't think i will have any problem with sorek uh, <laughs> the the um, what do you say in english <laughs> the one who can eat the roots what do you say uh, you know I get it because there are so many rocks anyway and roots uh, underneath here so I think they will have a really a problem if 
finding the apple root and also I plant a lot of different um, competitive things around so it's not standing alone. I don't just cover it with a ground cover. I put a lot of other roots around it like in the comfrey and, and the berries and the onions and and sometimes I also do more like um, about um, um, Jordatskokke, um, the bulbs <laughs> from the sunflower uh, um, relative uh, that get bulbs and also sunflowers and anything with large roots that compete and um, give a nice food for the for the <laughs> sorker, the ground eating. I'm so sorry. The animals in the ground that eat the roots just uh, put some competition for um, to to make them eat other stuff. Oh my god! And around here, along all of those rocks that you can see here, was underneath the ground here. So the small rocks are still there, uh, but this is uh, so it. Uh, stores a lot of heat and um, possibly a lot of uh, snails as well but also other beneficial insects can have their habitat among those stones and they store the heat and I planted I seeded a palmo uh, poppy poppies oh. and um, herbs along the rocks here and um, Oregano and um, chives and um, tim, timian. I obviously need to learn some of the English names for the plants. So this is an apple tree and then there is another apple tree up there that is um, that pollinate each other. And I don't have a very large land so I take varieties that are um, good for the climate here and that I know that I will like. One is a, like a winter apple and one is an autumn apple and then I will also plant a summer apple that I cannot store. Um, so I will have three apple trees and then I will have two pears and probably a plum and two cherries and uh, then I will go for more experimental trees after that. But of course I will play with the warm zones and have a little bit of fun as well. So let's look at the disasters from the year this year. But then let's also have a look on uh, the sharing that I had from such a nice course participant to this, uh, this course that had a very nice greenhouse. Maybe I already showed you. This is so that uh, all of you others don't feel too depressed if you also had a disaster this year. So I had hundreds of tomato plants <laughs> and I didn't know where to put them. But this kind of solved the problem, didn't it? <laughs> uh, so yeah, this tray here is just bye bye. Look at that. It was that night with minus four. That killed it. What is that? Doesn't look too good. The corn kind of died. Here's one little poor corn left or maybe two. Uh, but you should be glad for what you have and this just means that I will eat other things and so maybe the tomatoes will ripe later this year because they don't have a good start, really. Uh, as the peppers uh, over there seem to have um, made it, but they absolutely does not grow in this cold weather. I think now finally the summer is here. And um, this one made it. It's um, a Spanish variety of um, Purgulac. Um, The name doesn't come uh, that uh, spread uh, and give them 
many of those onions and mm, here are some tomatoes that I replanted in bigger pots that seem to have made it and uh, I can, no, this is the old variety of brandywine that has these leaves so maybe this is like a more than a hundred year old variety maybe that's you know why it's still around because it's uh, hardy maybe it handled these situations for many years and that's why they're still around that's why it's so good with the old varieties because they they, they survived, survived so many different conditions and we shouldn't throw the old varieties away and the sunflowers obviously the or the kale and the onions survived and then uh, New Zealand spinach survive and uh, never buy the permanent marker from Viltema. I can tell you, I don't even know what it is. I think it's good, good uh, flower here. It survived some of those tomatoes, survive, but they don't look nice. I, but I'll, I'll make it try. And uh, the roots from the sweet potato seem to have died. Uh, it's been too cold here. The fennel survived. And the salad onions survived. And the uh, root celery survived. Um, and um, the cucumbers and the pumpkins look like this. Will they come with new leaves? So it seems. Here comes something new. They're not totally dead. It seems like uh, there's a chance that some of them survived. So, do you feel depressed by this? No. I bought uh, this from uh, just because I want to have a little bit of um, tomatoes early. I bought a plant. Oh, this. So, just to cheer me up a little bit. <laughs> but I'll have to take care of it. I will do some watering here and we seem to have a nice weather coming this week and my team from Jamaica died over there and the beans and the pedamelon that I really loved seem to have died and uh, or some of it might uh, come come back I certainly hope so but then we did some uh, gathering of more raspberry on a place uh, where people left had leftovers from an old garden and um, took that with us from the course and we also gathered some things from the ocean and um, someone had salad with them from the course. They had extra endive and, and uh, salads. I put some of my onions in here because I was still waiting for uh, my body to make more of those soil beds there <laughs> soon. There's just so many rocks underneath. And um, see if you can see anything in here. Look at this. So one of the participants uh, had this in the greenhouse. So I can uh, have kale. And also spaghetti, pumpkin and cardon. And, uh, and some cucumbers and some some uh, Chinese uh, onion and you know it's not just uh, wonderful so the season is um, saved a little bit and uh, one of my almond trees has survived and I will try to replant this one I think 
That's, uh, I'll show you other projects tomorrow maybe because this video is getting too long I guess uh, and I'll show you more about so a way of doing a replant uh, co-planting in a more like maintenance uh, way that takes a lot of effort and time and then uh, uh, one of the other days this week I'll show you uh, how you can do it in a, in a quick way over a larger surface with seeds and stuff instead but still gets um, a nice result so this co-planting here is put uh, where the vegetable field is so that I can put down some perennial vegetables here and and really like uh, maintain it and take care of it because I pass pass it by it every day and I can water it and I can harvest it easily and so on so I cannot do the whole garden in that way it's just not possible uh, it would take so much time and uh, but by time if I want to I can do that uh, so and the, the carrots are coming up fine, the, the onions are really coming up fine and the, the kale is coming up that I direct seeded, coming fine. No slugs here yet, probably because the excavator was here and, and there, there's no grass or no nothing to eat for them here so, but uh, we'll see. Um, yeah. That's it for today and if you haven't already so please subscribe to this channel and you will have um, updates uh, of this um, well future uh, permaculture homestead and uh, the progress here and the life living here and I'll talk anything from the economy and uh, living with children and work um, fun and success and, and failures and whatever anything uh, I'd like to inspire you if you're looking for uh, a way to live in a simple way close to nature and think it's really complicated but you don't need, really need to do things that complicated. So um, have a lovely day all of you and uh, see you later this week. Bye bye.